early in the life of the company, you had this incredible break, breakthrough, yeah. where you got the contract with Babies R Us. You know, like any other hardware company, you took that on, but then ran almost immediately into cash flow problems. Yep. Um, you know, at first, when you think about hardware, what's the, for someone who's, who's creating a hardware product, yep. what are the challenges that you have just in managing the business side of it? Yep. Um, I think there's really two ways to approach it. One is you can really try to bootstrap it and do everything in-house, do it really scrappily, um, do some alpha beta testing, and then figure out you know, if you want to be able to go direct to consumer so that you can maintain your profit margin, even if you don't have that much cash on hand, and also own the customer experience in case there are problems with it. The other way you can do it, which is the way a lot of companies have done it, for instance, Nest, um, is raise a ton of money out of the gate. And then you just hire, 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 so that you can solve any problem before you even really start. Um, but to do that, you need not just millions, but tens of millions of dollars to be able to get something to product that way. And you also have a heavy draw um, on your bottom line because you're just paying a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, for us, I knew that I wanted to be able to raise enough money. Um, it wasn't going to be particularly fruitful given the size of the team that we had to have people be really anxious about their own personal salaries or cash mm -hmm. flow. Um, and so I was trying to raise money really, really actively. Um, and that sometimes went well and it sometimes didn't go really well. And one of the problems was that our investors demanded that we have a large sales contract. Um, so get some POs from the number one, you know, the apex predator in the baby world, mm. which is Babies R Us at the time. Um, but to do that, I had to commit to it before we had any cash in the door. And mm. Babies R Us would want to turn something around really quickly. And so I'd basically be trying to find enough cash to shove into the system to make enough product and then work on a cash flow cycle from there because it was constantly up and down and up and down. Mm. And also with a new product, you can't really predict what the take rate is going to be. Zero percent chance. With a consumer hardware product for babies that was IoT and a wearable, it was an entirely new field and sector within the space. And the, the buyer, who was a wonderful woman, she had a flip phone, she had no idea how to use Wi-Fi or a router or anything, was like, I'm going to make a guess. And so we, we did budgeting based off of that guess, and then it ended up being much more successful than we anticipated, which and was great. Yeah. And it was terrible. And it was terrible. Yeah. 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 Because <laughs> your cash flow just went to hell, Yeah. Right? And then we were out of money almost yeah. immediately. So, you know... As a hardware provider, when you're out of money, it means it's not just you who's out of money. There's a whole chain of yep. supply yep. of people supplying you who who have problems with their cash flow. Right. Because now you're paying them slow, you're not paying them at all, yep. you know, and so on. Yep. Um, and how you know, you've dealt with this problem now for several years, yep. where you're constantly short of money, sometimes just out of money. Yep. How, how do you think about dealing with your suppliers? And what's the best way to deal with them when you yeah. can't do what they want, which yep. is to pay them? Yep. I think first and foremost, you have to make a commitment that you are going to pay them no matter what. And there's a lot of manufacturers, whether they do plastics or boards or whatever, mm -hmm. who have been burned really hard. And so it's asking a lot to be able to say, I might not be able to pay you now. I will be able to pay you later. And I promise that I will do that. And they mm -hmm. literally have to make a judgment call based off of that fact because mm -hmm. um, they don't know really mm -hmm. with a product like this, how it's going to do in the market. And they just have to trust you and that you're going to get the cash in the door to pay them. In addition, if things go south, um, which they have done for us several times, it's really important to have open lines of communication as well. Um, if you're in a communication vacuum, it's really easy for your mind to go to a deep, dark place that says, Dulcie is just trying to screw me over, rest devices isn't going to pay, and I'm going to have to lay off half of my workforce, or I'm going to have to do X, Y, Z, or figure something else out. Mm -hmm. And so um, I will admit that like, I, I tried to be highly communicative, but there were always times when I didn't know what was going to happen. And so sometimes I would wait like a week, two weeks, for whatever reason. And the biggest thing you can do as a founder and as a CEO is just stay communicative. And it's okay if you say, I don't have any cash, I can't pay you, but I will pay you because they just want to know that you care about them, that you're continuing to think about them and that you're continuing to work to get that money in the door to turn around and pay them.